Does your adventuring party struggle making decisions? Well, couldn't decide on breakfast if it was all laid out in front of you on a buffet. Okay, that's it's getting a little... So many maybe options. the players can't agree on the next best course of action. Or maybe you're the one left unsure or upset about the decisions they made. These types of situations can distract from getting to the good parts of the game and can cause frustration for everyone at the table. So what's the solution? Welcome back to the dungeon. I'm Dostan I, and today we're going to talk about how facilitation techniques can help you and everyone at your table have a better game. So let's get you some skill training and help everyone at the table have more fun. Now I know what you're probably thinking. I'm not the leader type. I don't want to argue with people, especially at the gaming table. Good. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone who can help lead the group to making decisions. But that brings up a good point. The group needs a final decision maker. One of the reasons groups have problems making decisions is they don't have that one person that's in charge of making that final decision. Many players are hesitant to step into this role because they don't want to come across as being bossy or controlling. Some players don't have the confidence or experience or feel like they have the right to make a decision for the entire group. This can shut down communication and just make it less fun for everybody at the table. This is where your role as a facilitator comes in. As a facilitator, you can help guide the group towards making a decision without you coming across as controlling or heavy-handed. Whatever we do, we need to make a decision and actually do it. You're like the wind in the sails of the adventuring ship, pushing it ever forward. The first step of this is to identify who the decision maker is. And this brings up a tricky question, because are we talking about the players around the table or the characters in the game? So do you select a character in game to be the final decision maker, or do you as players decide who around the table is going to be a final decision maker? I prefer selecting a character in game to be that decision maker, but then let the player know that they're going to have all of the ideas and support of everyone around the table, and that even if things go wrong, when things go wrong, everyone is on board for whatever happens. I very much prefer this to picking a player who has the most experience or maybe is the most assertive at the table because this is a role playing game. Give someone who doesn't think of themselves as a decision maker a chance to be one. It's a little like selecting a designated driver, but instead of them getting you home safe, you know they're going to get you deep in those shenanigans. In the end, it might change the dynamics at the table slightly, but as long as you have a final decision maker, it really doesn't matter how they were selected. Oh, and don't try to split this up or share it or democratize it in some way. This can work for some groups, but in my experience, it often still leads to awkward situations where people's feelings might get hurt or you're left to a die roll or a flip of a coin to decide really important decisions. Flip the coin and let fate have it. As a facilitator, your first big role is likely to initiate the selection of this decision maker. All right, adventurers, we should get something straight. We need to know who ultimately decides our path. Who decides for us when we are at an impasse? Who among us has the wisdom and level-headedness to guide us through tough choices? I'll start by nominating the small one who brings a different perspective to us all. If you can agree on a decision maker, your role as facilitator is fast at hand. Support them and let them know that no matter what decisions they make, everyone is behind them, even when some people might not agree with the decision. You likely picked up on that I'm saying decision maker and not leader. Nothing gets by you. It's important to know that the decision maker is not necessarily the leader. A player or character who's more naturally inclined to lead can lead the party for the majority of the time. It's only when a conflict arises that you need to make sure the group turns and asks the decision maker. But for the decision maker to be effective, it's essential that everyone's ideas and opinions are heard. You support the decision maker by encouraging players to speak up and express their thoughts and ideas, reminding them that there's no wrong answers and that they're only contributing options. And that even ideas they think are bad can still be helpful. I feel like that's probably a... Uh, that's a plan C? What are you talking about? This is the time! We're gathering options! To get everyone's views, at some point you may need to interrupt or shut down some of those players that may be a little too aggressive or just want to express their opinions a lot, so there's room for other people to talk. A good way to handle this is to hear them out and then rephrase what you think they're saying so it's clear to everyone in the group. Ask them if that's actually what they mean and if they agree, great. They know they've been heard and you can move on to someone else. It might sound something like this. Okay, hold on, Garthok, I think I know what you're saying. 
You want us all to do push-ups so we're strong enough for the next battle. Is that right? Yes, they make us strong. Great. Renee, what's your idea? Depending on the personalities at your table, this may feel like a little bit of conflict at first, but everyone's going to appreciate that you aren't advocating for yourself or your ideas. You're not arguing or trying to be controlling. You're advocating for fairness and for everybody to be heard and have fun. And that's why you're all there. So while it may feel difficult at first, realize when it's time to step in and hear from people who haven't had their turn to speak yet. This is the hardest thing to start as being a facilitator, but as soon as you do, other players are gonna recognize what you're doing and get on board. So it gets a lot easier over time. Now, once everyone has had a chance to voice your ideas and concerns, it's your turn again. As facilitator, it's important to set a time limit for any further discussion. Just use a timer and let everyone know when the time is up, the decision maker will make the final call. This helps keep the discussion focused and stops you from getting bogged down in endless debate. And this is where you hand it over to the decision maker. Sometimes they still lack the confidence to make a decision based on the discussion. Oh, I don't like how this is making me feel. I highly encourage you to remind them that everyone at the table is behind them and no matter what they decide, everyone wants to see how the story plays out, no matter what. Make a confident <clears throat> decision. Uh, that seems like what all you guys wanted to do, right? Confident the bigger one? Confident decision. Not anything decision. you want, Chester. Tell us, Don't leader, put this Chester. on me if we all die. T-Rex is a T-Rex one when we take the smaller one, but sure. the older one is bigger. The bigger one is feeble. If you think <laughs> that the bigger one is feeble, I'm with you 100%. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go after the big one. I okay. don't know. But if they're still not comfortable making a decision, as a facilitator, you can remind them that they don't have to rely just on their own judgment. They can turn to decision-making tools to do some work for them. This could be a simple coin flip, a die roll, a round of rock, paper, scissors, or a vote. But if you can, just get them to decide, even blindly. The less time you argue about going around or going through, the more time there is for chopping monsters and counting coins. So now you see your role as a facilitator is not to make decisions, but to be that unseen hand behind the group that helps make decisions happen. Play this role well, and you'll create an environment where everyone's ideas and opinions are heard and respected. It'll be a more collaborative space where everyone can have fun. This will streamline the game and help you guys get to the parts of the game that you all love. So tell me, did it work? Did you level up that player skill? A skill is only as good as how you use it, so remember to put it into practice and see the results in your next gaming session. And maybe even be on the table. Because this skill, like so many other skills in our hobby, transcends the table and helps us just be more well-rounded people. Now, it's up to you, decision maker. Do you hit that like button and let YouTube know that you think other players should do this in your games too? The choice is yours, but whatever decision you make, I'm here to support and guide you and just watch the story unfold. So until next time, support each other and go make great games.